transaction fees. Another quote feature of blockchain is the transaction fee system. On some blockchains, it's called gas, but it's basically a fee you pay to the node operators for handling the transaction. What makes blockchain different from other transactional systems is that this fee is not fixed. It is more like a tip than a fee, and you can specify any amount. Some blockchains have hard-coded minimum fees, some do not. Originally, the idea of the transaction fee was established to keep bad actors from clogging the system with bogus or disruptive transactions, which brings up another point. How fast is the blockchain? We'll get into that in a minute, but suffice to say, blockchain is not by its nature a very fast transactional system. Bitcoin, for example, is capable of handling about 4.7 transactions per second. This is significantly less than credit card systems, which can handle thousands. This also doesn't take into account that it takes even longer for a transaction in crypto to be finalized. In Bitcoin, that can be as long as 10 minutes. The transaction fee system has two purposes make it expensive to transact on the network to stop spam, and provide another way to pay the node operators for maintaining the network. Many blockchain token designs have a finite amount of tokens, like Bitcoin, which means at some point in the future, mining rewards will drop to zero, at which point there has to be another incentive to keep operating the blockchain, and that's when the nodes will depend exclusively on transaction fees. You would normally think a transactional database would operate in a sequential manner. Transactions are processed in the order in which they are received. But this isn't typically the case with blockchain. Instead, there's a market where transactions post different amounts of fees in an effort to get faster service. This sliding scale obviously benefits the operators of the network more than anybody else. It also means there's less incentive to make the network more efficient during times of congestion when operators can make more money. It's not very consumer friendly. Who wants to have to guess at how much it will cost to complete their transaction? Crypto developers obviously disagree. This peak time pricing model might make sense for a service like Uber because higher prices will encourage more drivers to operate during those times and handle more riders. However, blockchain doesn't usually work like that. Increased traffic simply jams the system because all major blockchains are hard coded to handle a certain amount of transactions in a certain amount of time and making the network handle more requires discussion, code changes, and consensus. There is no way to dynamically increase the throughput of many blockchain's base layers. More nodes entering the network during peak times don't cause performance to scale to meet demand. Blockchain's inability to scale to meet even the most modest increases in traffic is one of the many problems with the technology. So much so that this has caused many blockchains like Bitcoin to fork into different versions, some designed to handle more traffic than others. And other solutions people call L2 or Layer 2 solutions, which are basically extra layers of computer networks to help manage the queue and make it appear to handle more transactions faster. In reality, these L2 solutions are just a kludge. The core design of Bitcoin is inherently difficult to scale by its nature. With blockchain, increased fees don't make the network operate better. They just create an auction type system where whoever pays the highest fee has the best chance of moving to the front of the line. And this ability to jump ahead of other people who may have started transactions before you also creates additional problems, like allowing people to front run other transactions and engage in market manipulation. Once again, the decentralized design introduces a whole array of additional problems traditional databases and financial markets don't have to deal with.